Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Edward Rodriguez with your weekly historical interview. Today, we have the amazing, fearless, and brave Rose O'Neill Greenhow. Now, Rose, how are you adapting to the 21st century? Surprisingly well, Edward, although all these lights and cameras and phones, as you call them, are a bit terrifying. Oh, don't you worry, Rose. Now, let's talk about your life throughout the 1800s. What would you say was your view throughout the Civil War? I was actually a Confederate spy. A spy? That's so interesting, Rose. Tell me more. Well, I was in Washington, D.C., the Union's capital, collecting information for the Confederate States. I traveled in many important and respected circles of people and made many friendships with presidents, generals, senators, and high-ranking officials. I used my resources to send important military information at the start of the war. What an important woman, I would say. Tell me about your childhood, growing up, and how that influenced your decision to be a Confederate spy. I was born in 1817 as Maria Rosetta O'Neill in Port Tobacco, Maryland. My father was murdered by his slaves, though, and I was then orphaned, but I got to live with my aunt, and I was sent to Washington, D.C. as a teenager, and that's where I stayed. What a wonderful woman she seems like. Tell us more. <laughs> Her name was Maria Ann Hill, and she ran a stylish boarding house at the old Capitol building. This is how I was introduced to important figures in the Washington area, and how I started, you know, my life. Sounds very nice. Now I've heard your nickname, Wild Rose. Would you care to explain? <laughs> when I was young, many people told me that I was beautiful, educated, loyal, compassionate, and refined. I had olive skin and a rosy complexion, thus giving me the name of Wild Rose. Well, look at you. You would earn it. Throughout the 1830s, someone important entered your life. Who may that be? Yes, actually. That was my husband, Dr. Robert Greenhow. We met, and though many generals and military officials did not like this, we were well-liked, especially by Dolly Madison, and we married in 1835. That's wonderful! Congrats! How was your marriage? Oh, my husband was amazing. He taught me history and gave me so much access to documents of the state through his work in the State Department. We had eight children. My last child was given the name Rose O'Neill Greenhow after me. She was the Little Rebel, also known as Little Rose. My husband soon died after her birth. My sympathy for the Confederates grew after his death. And many people soon saw my loyalty, and I was then recruited as a spy. And that's where it all began. Oh my, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm terribly sorry for your loss. But how did your career as a spy... Excellent, actually. I was credited to securing the Confederates' victory at Manassas over the Union Army by sending General P.G.T. Beauregard critical information about the battle. And you never got caught? Actually, I did. August 23, 1861, Alan Pinkerton had me placed under house arrest, yet I was still able to send out information. On January 18, 1862, I was transferred to Old Capitol Prison and I brought literals with me, yet I still sent out information. Amazing! How are you able to do it? <laughs> Great question. Actually, I once sent out a message in the hair of a woman's bun. But usually, the position of blinds and the number of candles burning in my window had special meaning to them. I even flew the Confederate flag from my prison window. You are extremely fearless, Rose. I don't even know. How were you released? Thankfully, I was. May 31st, 1862 to be exact. We were then deported to Richmond, Virginia, and I was hailed as a hero to the Southerners. Did you retire then? Definitely not. I was then enlisted as a courier to Europe. Oh, I didn't quite understand what you just said. What is a, um, courier? Oh, I'm sorry, that's a term we used back then. But a courier is a person or company who delivers messages, packages, and mail. Now that that's settled, what happened in Europe? Well, you can read my memoirs, titled My Imprisonment and the First Year of Abolition Rule at Washington to find out. But long story short, Europe was very successful. They really felt for the Confederates. But on the way back home, our ship, the Candor, was followed by the USS Nifon. I was scared that I would be caught, so I escaped by rowboat, but then drowned with $2,000 worth of gold and a bag around my neck for the Confederates. I'm so sorry to hear that, Rose. Do you at least think that you actually lived a life of purpose? I really think I did. I tried to help the Confederacy as much as I could, and that was my life's dream. Thank you so much, Rose. Well, that's all for today. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you so much, Edward. <laughs>